He was once a member of Antifa and is now a conservative activist who just released a new book, Behind the Black Mask, My Time as an Antifa Activist. Gabriel Nadalis, thank you for being here. Sir, uh, you. you were Antifa. Let's listen to Joe Biden. I want to hear Joe Biden talk about Antifa. This said, is a left-wing uh, 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 white supremacist. Antifa is an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not malicious. Well, let's ask one of the former Antifa members himself. Were you an idea or were you an organization? Well, honestly, Joe Biden needs to face the facts because here are the facts. Uh, it is not an idea that for the last three months, Rose City Antifa has been orchestrating a riot every night in the streets of Portland. And it is not just an idea that in those same riots, an Antifa terrorist gunned down a Trump supporter in the street. Antifa is just undeniable. And every time that Joe Biden keeps to deny its existence, it's only going to get worse. So Joe Biden, if you continue to deny this, one day Antifa will come for you. Gabriel, who, who finances Antifa? So as far as funding, a lot of people think that it may be like George Soros or something like that, but it's not. A lot of Antifa chapters are actually very self-funded or within their own community. And it's actually a lot more dangerous to think of this because then it reveals that there are people out there who are motivated to destroy America as opposed to just getting paid for this kind of stuff. And it's, it's an incredibly pressing problem that's continuing to grow. Give me a, a, a kind of a profile of a typical Antifa member. What makes someone decide they want to become an Antifa member? What, what is it in their life, their, their, their background, their school, their socialism? What, what's happening to people that say, I'm going to pick up and start being, throw rocks and maybe shoot someone because I, I, I need to be part of this cause? Well, a lot of the people in Antifa, they feel marginalized. They feel like they don't belong. I can tell you from personal experience that I grew up with a lot of left-wing television, specifically Univision and Telemundo, who believe, made me believe that America was my enemy. Not only that, but I also had a lot of teachers in middle school and high school who taught me the same uh, ideas, anti-American ideas. After a while, all these seeds were planted in my head, and I became a liberal activist. But it, then it became easy to take that next step and become an Antifa activist because I already hated America since I was preconditioned to believe this as I was growing up. And I can tell you that a lot of people in Antifa, they hate America. That's really what they're standing against. It, it, Antifa does not stand for something. It stands against American values. It, it really blows me away. You know, they're, the Antifa, anti-fascist, they, they, you know, they, they, their mon moniker makes you think that they're trying to open up, shine, shed light on things. But they just had a day of rage in Portland this week, and they declined mm -hmm. to allow cameras, which means they're doing things exactly what they're supposed to be fighting against. Does it not? Am I missing this? No, I mean, they're, they're engaging in the same type of fascist tactics that they are supposed to be fighting against. But I mean, let's just look at what happened in Portland, uh, I believe on Monday. They were supposed to be fighting against that fascist uh, Columbus, right? Well, they went to Portland and they, they tore down a statue of Abraham Lincoln and President Roosevelt, two of the greatest American presidents that we've had. And I mean, one of them ended slavery, and yet he is the fascist. Again, Antifa is not about fighting true fascism. They just want to destroy American history. And we can see that every single day just by following the riots. Gabriel Nadalis, again, former Antifa member, now conservative. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it.